All right, guys, welcome to our second installment of Mosquito Bites Live. Uh, this week we're doing it in honor of National Mosquito Week, which is why I'm wearing my super awesome and cool uh, t-shirt. Um, we have a very exciting lineup uh, in store for everyone uh, this coming week, so be sure you guys are tuning in uh, as we continue to do more of these Mosquito Bites Live. Uh, today we're very excited to have Andy Lima, uh, all the way from uh, Virginia, who'll be joining us in just a few minutes. Uh, but uh, feel free to look up on our schedule that we have. Uh, we have uh, 305 Mosquito, which is Miami-Dade County, uh, coming up tomorrow. Then we have a PR uh, Vector Control on uh, Wednesday, which we're very excited about, which is the Puerto Rico one. That's a very exciting one, which will be in Spanish. And um, on Thursday, we have Orange County Vector Control, which will be with us on Thursday. Uh, so again, this is in honor of National Mosquito Week. We hope you guys have seen our brand new Ada uh, that is gonna be festering around in the coming time. She's over my shoulder currently. Uh, so I'm gonna bring Instabug in right now and see if we can uh, get chatting with him in just a few minutes. I should be bringing in Andy, AKA MC Bugsy in just a few minutes and uh, we'll get uh, talking about Mosquito Week. Hey, Andy. Hey, what's up, man? Good to see you, Paolo. Good, good to see you, Andy. Well, thank you again for joining us for uh, Mosquito Bites Live in honor of uh, National Mosquito Week. We're really excited to have you. Yeah, love being here. Represent vector control out there. <laughs> there the you West Coast. Your classic vector control. Um, can you give a, just a little a brief description of you, Andy Lima, a.k.a. MC Bugsy? Yeah, so I'm, um, I've been working in mosquito control for about uh, 15 years now. And for the last five years or so with the Fairfax County Health Department here in uh, Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. Um, so my name is Andy Lima, and I also have uh, the, the stage name of MC Bugsy. Um, <laughs> been doing some uh, entomology hip hop for um, almost that same amount of time, about 15 years now. So um, it's a lot of fun, fun way to share with the people about how to protect themselves from mosquitoes. That's awesome. And I got to meet you last year at AMCA. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little starstruck. I'm like, oh my, holy crap, uh, Andy's there. So uh, very excited to have you uh, join us for National Mosquito Week. Um, we have a few questions we'll go over. Uh, the first one is just why it's important to recognize uh, National Mosquito Week, uh, which uh, kicked off yesterday and we'll be doing all kinds of stuff. And we know nationwide vector control agencies across the nation are gonna be doing a lot of cool stuff. Uh, but you kinda of wanna give some insight into just the importance of bringing awareness to mosquito and vector control. Yeah, um, certainly an important week and um, mosquitoes are arguably one of the most important animals on the planet, um, mostly for, for the fact that they, I mean, they annoy all of us. I, I, don't, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who enjoys a mosquito bite, um, unless maybe they're feeding a colony or something like that. But, um, but yeah, mosquitoes still, um, still are responsible for close to probably a half million deaths a year. Um, and a lot of those in sub-Saharan Africa and, and places that have a lot of malaria transmission. But we know that dengue transmission is also, um, you know, many millions of infections every year. And some of those can be fatal. We have a whole host of mosquito-borne diseases that have really, you know, shaped the course of human history. And so it's, um, it's at this point in 2020 now that we have a lot of great you know, mosquito control looks a lot different now than it did um, in the in the early DDT uh, broad spectrum insecticide treatments. And there's a lot of ways that we can be way more environmentally friendly and targeted with our mosquito control efforts. Um, but probably most important is that that people just um, have a personal responsibility, especially in their own yards, and um, to to control mosquitoes. And there's a lot that people can do on their own to to prevent mosquito bites and prevent mosquito-borne disease. So that's, that's what this week's all about, is just getting the word out there and um, letting people know that, that we exist and that we're here to help. Um, and I know you guys do a great job of that on the West Coast too. 
Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree with everything that you said, and especially everything going on right now with COVID-19 and being in a, in a pandemic, we cannot forget about uh, mosquito prevention, that mosquitoes are still very much out there uh, breeding and, uh, you know, laying their eggs and uh, becoming larvae and pupa and emerging as adults and still spreading the viruses that they spread. Uh, like what we experience a lot here, which is West Nile virus. So making sure we're continuing to stay on top of that, even during uh, these pressing times that we're in. Uh, and one of the things that uh, we definitely like to highlight, especially being in the communications department, is a lot of the creative stuff that we get to do in trying to get the word out there, not just being the same thing over and over again, but trying to do new fun things like doing an Instagram Live. Um, and I know you, you do a lot of your own music and you're putting out music videos. Uh, I got first wind of you because of uh, the uh, Zika 101 song that went viral. And you've done a number of, uh, of those since. You want to give some more insight into uh, your, mos your mosquito music uh, background? Yeah, certainly. When I started uh, for a private mosquito control company back in 2004, um, I wrote my first ever mosquito uh, rap, which was played over guitar, but it was called Six Legs Don't Stand a Chance. And so that's one of the probably less seen. There was never really an official video or anything for that one. But that's kind of when I, um, that was one of my first songs that I did. And um, yeah, when, when Zika came out in 2016, um, and we were all kind of expecting this arrival in the Americas to a, a naive population that has never been exposed to a new virus, similar to what we saw with, with COVID, um, is that you have a bunch of people who, who are gonna be at risk for that. And, um, and so I, I, when I make these songs, the goal is just to essentially take CDC messaging, um, which is something that we're all trying to amplify in our programs and put it into song form. And um, you know that first video of Zika 101, I was able to do with um, mostly an iPhone and you know, my mom was even in there doing some shots for me. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> little, little bit of GoPro and um, just put it together on a MacBook. And then um, since then I've done a couple more videos too that had um, where I was actually able to join up with the county resources um, who were able to provide access to things like green screen and much higher production capabilities too. So um, in uh, 2019, we released West Nile Story. Um, and um, part of this has been, you know, back and forth with, uh, with you guys out there in, in, in uh, California, because um, there have been some mosquito wraps of, of your own that have come out of that state. And <laughs> uh, so it's been a fun, uh, fun little back and forth and cross promotional opportunities. And um, just something that's that's fun to do. You know, I, I like uh, I came up with a lot of underground hip hop and the focus is always um, big time on the lyrics and maybe less about the beats and stuff like that. So if you can combine the two and get some messaging out there, then it's something that can go through your community and maybe people think is cool enough to to share it along. And then, you know, we're all winning because. If, if your neighbor is doing their part and you're doing your part, then you're, you're probably pretty pretty well off, um, at, at least in your own home habitat there. And this is an especially great time while all of us are home, um, spending more time in our own homes, in our own yards to, to make sure you're getting around and doing those important things like, you know, tipping and tossing any kind of standing water, especially in containers around the yard. Um, because a lot of those species that are going to be most apt to be biting us during those daytime hours, um, you know, both east and west coast, we share the, the Asian tiger mosquito and, and also the yellow fever mosquito, Aedes aegypti. And um, those can be pestiferous species, but also medically important. Um, and certainly you mentioned Western Nile, which is the main mosquito-borne disease that we see in our area. And, um, you know, Cali is even more hard hit with that too, because you guys have some uh, interesting vector dynamics with Q Culex tarsalis out there as well. Yeah. Um, we're primarily Culex pipians and Qu Quinque fasciatus out here. So um, the messaging for the songs holds across both coasts, and it's just been a lot of fun to, to do that. And that's been really cool. Like you mentioned, yeah, we, we've had our own uh, songs here on our end. Uh, Levy, aka the Mosquito Guy, uh, when he was at Greater Los Angeles, did the Mosquito Rap. 
uh, as kind of a, a, a holds to you uh, and a lot of inspiration as well uh, from the, the stuff that you've done. And then here at San Gabriel Valley, uh, we did Don't Bring Back the 80s uh, by incorporating our uh, ADA and uh, bringing the whole idea of 80s mosquitoes and getting people to understand uh, this different type of species that we're all facing, especially here in Southern California, something that we've never had to face uh, before. But I really like what you said about, you know, even though at face value, it's a song and it's fun, but at the same time, we're delivering very important messaging uh, out to the general public. And I think it's really important that we're able to touch on those because we're able to reach a much, much larger audience than just the standard um, or the stereotypical boring government messaging. Uh, we're trying to get something out there fun, people uh, dancing, people really getting that messaging of tip toss, uh, protecting themselves with uh, mosquito repellent or understanding how 80s mosquitoes, uh, what, how their behavior is different uh, than ours, which is why we use Ada as our own uh, educational tool to be able to get that uh, very important messaging out there and in a very fun way, which I think is really important because you know, if you're bored watching it, that means your audience is bored as well. So uh, it's really important just to make it fun uh, and exciting, I think, for everyone across the board. Um, my last I, question I, for you. That just your guys, the, the choreography out of the uh, Cali video, <laughs> you know, some next level stuff. Uh, you know, on this end, it's, it's mostly me and we've had a couple of our employees that when we did a Facebook Live did some awesome um, choreography to uh, to illustrate the message but you guys out there have you get many people involved and um, I'm sure some of them are some of the higher ups that uh, might be a little camera shy at times that's a challenge <laughs> so kudos to you guys in your videos man they're they're a lot of fun I hope you'll pop pop them in your in your bio or something like that and jump <laughs> on and check them out because they're really nice productions in, in themselves too Thank you. And that's something we're also very proud of. A lot of it is in-house stuff. Uh, the people dancing in their backgrounds are our own technicians, our own general managers that are getting in on the fun because they also see the value in bringing that type of messaging in a fun and creative way, not the the um, not what has been done over and over again, something that's fun. You know, music videos, at the end of the day, it's fun. It's something catchy. Uh, and also, at the end of the day, I think it's also helpful for everyone getting together and getting that type of uh, messaging out there correctly uh, and uh, uniformed as well. Uh, so my last question for you, because I know we're all uh, uh, mosquito enthusiasts or mosquito nerds ourselves, um, what is your uh, favorite mosquito fact out there that you've stumbled upon in your experience? Um, I'll, I'll shy away from mosquito fact, but go toward um, a particular genus of mosquito that um, has my utmost respect because so it's the Toxorhynchides genus, um, also known as the elephant mosquito. And this is a species that um, they grow incredibly large as larvae. Um, and they're actually predaceous on other mosquito species and their own species, unfortunately, for their species. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so they're holistic, but also predatory on, on some of our um, disease spreading mosquitoes. So namely, they feed on a lot of um, things that grow up in containers with them. Um, our eastern tree hole mosquitoes, our, our Asian tiger mosquito, Aedes albopictus, who uh, Ada is modeled after. And uh, the 80s Egypti mosquitoes, yeah, there she is, um, where, where that's found. And so it's a large red larva that feeds voraciously and can eat hundreds of these other um, pest and disease spreading mosquitoes. And once they get to adulthood, um, they hatch into these iridescent, like I call them the LA Lakers mosquitoes because they're just kind <laughs> of flash gold and purple and green and um, and they actually feed strictly on nectar as adults. So they go um, from being a benef beneficial biological control to um, it can actually, there, there are places like Harris County, Texas that are trying to rear these things en masse um, for, for the first time uh, to really try to ramp up production efforts of this species so that they can actually do some biological control. So I think it's important that the, the naturalists among us, I'm a naturalist and an environmentalist myself that does apply pesticides at times, but 
Um, it's important that people know that we try to target our treatments and our, our controls in the best way that we can to help protect public health and ba balance personal and human safety. And um, there are great agencies above us like the EPA, um, Environmental Protection Agency that, that regulate all these things. And, uh, you know, responsible applicators are only using products that are labeled and approved for these uses and following those labels because the label is the law. So uh, when, when you do go and you buy some, um, some products to treat your own yard, um, if you are having problems with adult mosquitoes or larval mosquitoes in a habitat you can't get rid of, there are environmentally friendly options out there that are really targeted on mosquitoes and, and minimize the effects on a lot of those beneficial bugs that we all want to see around too. Definitely. I 100% agree with that. Uh, well, Andy, this was a great conversation. I really enjoyed having this time with you and getting more of a respect of the, the brains behind the videos. Uh, it's always exciting to see where that creativity comes from and where that inspiration comes from. So again, thanks for joining us for uh, Mosquito Bites Live. I hope everyone uh, out there goes and follows uh, Andy at Instabug uh, on his Instagram. And uh, keep an eye out because I'm sure you're not done uh, doing any uh, mosquito songs um, um, in the future. Do you want to leave us with uh, some last uh, rhymes on your end? Yeah, how about we just kick some lines from, um, from West Nile Story, um, which tells the tale of our most uh, common vector-borne disease here in the United States. And we'll say that uh, West Nile is a threat to public health in the summertime. Been here for 20 years. Shout out to Queens 99. Rapid spread from east to west. Now it's throughout the continental U.S. Culex, mosquito vector with a bird preference. In nature, West Nile cycles between mosquitoes and birds. When those mosquitoes feed on people, infections occur. Steady sip in dust till dawn because they're nighttime biters. Attack at twilight like micro vampires. <laughs> <laughs> That was absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, Andy, for that great uh, live version of West Nile Stories. Thanks again for joining us for Mosquito Bites Live. Be sure you guys join us tomorrow, same time on our Instagram story. We'll be with 305 Mosquito uh, joining us from uh, Miami-Dade County tomorrow. But again, thank you so much, Andy, for joining us. And uh, we'll talk and chat some other time. Thank you. I'll be watching all week long. Thank you, Pablo. And thank you to SGV over there. Keep up the great work. Awesome. Thanks so much, Andy. Take care. All right, guys. Power to the people. Thank you.